Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. As you can tell, probably my throat sounds a lot better, but this uh, thing that started as a sore throat is now a cold and now it's down in my lungs. I got like this deep, this heavy cough. So I am, one of my favorite things to do, if you gotta get sick or get, a, get the cold or get something like that, is I like those little packets where you can warm up some water and uh, have like a, it's like a hot Theraflu type drink or something. So that is what I'm drinking right now while I talk to you. Um, now, before I get going today, I wanted to uh, tell you a quick story. Um, I was reminded of this story this morning. I took my, my sons to the McDonald's drive-thru, and I was getting, it was one of those teachable moments that I, that I did with my 13-year-old. The girl in the drive-thru, when she was taking our orders, like, you know, she's taking the order like this. Uh, what will you have? Uh, okay, so that's one sausage biscuit. And, and she took the order like that instead of doing it like this. Hey, how can I help you today? What would you like? Uh, how about a sausage biscuit? Would you like a cup of coffee? And I was illustri I was showing. I was telling my son, trying to explain to my son what the difference in the approach is, and in general, in the approach in life is the approach to. Um, how you present yourself and what you sound like and how little things like that make a big difference and it's all about your attitude and the way that you present yourself and so while I was telling him that I was reminded of a story about my father when when he was growing up my father um, in this part of the world and I don't know if it's like like this in other places I know that when I go to I've been to England before and fish and chips, which is fried fish and uh, and uh, French fries with some vinegar on them. That's, that's a big thing there, which I love. But over here, uh, something that's really popular is fried catfish. And what comes with that would be slaw, hush puppies, fried onion rings, and this type of thing. Well, in the southeast United States, there's a lot of catfish farms where people raise catfish. And you'll see these small ponds, like if you go to Mississippi and places like that. The, the, you'll see a lot of them and then they have what's called fish camps and a fish camp is a is a, actually a restaurant but but it's where people go to eat fried uh, catfish well my dad was a waiter when he was younger at a fish camp and the they at this fish camp every uh, the way the way I remember my dad telling the story the all of the waiters there would be a competition to who to see who could sell the most onion rings like on a Friday nights or something. And my dad always won the, he always sold more onion rings than anyone else. And more as in 10 times more than anyone else. And so he said that the owner uh, approached him and asked him, uh, how are you selling all these onion rings? And my dad explained to him that it was really actually simple. When, when he had a whole table full of people, he would walk in the room and he would take their drink orders and then he would say, how many orders of onion rings are we gonna have at this table? In other words, it's not a question of whether you want onion rings, it's a question of how many you want. And so that is a, a total difference. All of the other waiters and waitresses went in and took the drink orders and they waited for those people to suggest to them what they were interested in. And all my dad was doing was he was subtly, subtly planning in their minds that they all wanted onion rings, they just didn't know it yet. And so this works in many things in life. And I don't, I'm not saying that this is just some kind of line, like a line you would use with women. Although what it really does is people are drawn to confidence. That's what this is really about. And that's what I was telling my son this morning. Confidence, people are drawn to it. People will compliment your confidence. People will buy what you're selling when you're confident. Confidence is everything. In fact, I, I, a takeoff on that, and you might get a kick out of this. Uh, back in my single days when I was dating, I was not going to ask a girl to go out on a date. I was going to ask her what time I'm supposed to pick her up <laughs> because we were going out on the date. It was just a matter of what time I needed to pick her up. <laughs> Same thing. 
<coughs> okay, enough of that. I thought I needed to tell you all that story because it, it, it. I learned so many little things. Some things my dad doesn't even know I learned from him, but that's one of them. And so I think that many of you, especially you young people out there, need to know that. Um, big. This is Big Skinny. Now, Big Skinny, I'm going to feature here um, at the beginning of my show. He's a funny guy, and so uh, I wanted to give him some credit, and I'm even going to give him a name this morning. Um, he's at... He's big skinny, but he's at not so skinny one. Okay, um, so go give him a follow. He's a, he's an important member of the community for a lot of reasons. Um, but <coughs> excuse me, there's that cough. First thing he sent me this, and this is from the XRP monitor transaction type escrow finish amount one billion XRP. And I think I'm not sure exactly what this is, but I think that this is uh. Um, the this is actual ripple moving it has to be ripple moving um, XRP to or from escrow but it's not every day you get to see 1 billion XRP uh, moving so I thought that was interesting but I also wanted to show you this the other the other day I told you I was gonna have the lemon pepper wings and so I tweeted this out a picture of my lemon pepper wings that I had Friday night and big skinny replied to me and he said did you get the kids meal or is, it, or is that the first round? So he was making fun of how few wings I had. It was actually that I took a picture of half the plate. If you look over here, there's more wings. So, but I thought it was hilarious that he was making fun of me about that. And he had uh, tweet, he had direct message with me about this. And he, he made a joke that I have all these people, these character, characters on my show, and that he could be the official. I I had mentioned in a video the other day that we have Twitter smart Alex that you know someone had replied this and I couldn't remember that it was him well it was him and so today I'm making the announcement yes I do have this cast of characters and I these are the, these are my characters so far that are associated with this channel I have the official neighbor of the digital asset invest, investor I have the official language snob that's my friend who corrected me on how I pronounce something and so I made him the official language snob I have the official advisor because I did have a, an issue I was trying to decide on about my channel and he helped me decide and so I said you may as well be the official advisor to the Digital Asset Investors channel. Then the other day we named Brad Combs as the official uh, morning walk live stream of the Digital Asset Investor channel. Now we will now be adding Big Skinny as the official Twitter smart aleck of the Digital Asset Investor channel. So. I, I'm trying to keep track of all these. Uh, maybe one day, uh, if I if I go and do a meetup somewhere, I can let you know if any of these cast of characters um, will be there, so that you can get their autograph. Who knows? You might want the official language snobs autograph one day. It might be worth something, but I doubt it. <laughs> okay, um, let's get rid of that, and now we'll get serious. This is from Michael at VAL Five Links Gold Bullion International or GBI, the world's leading precious metals providers announced the launch of its highly anticipated digital gold-based cryptocurrency on the Ripple platform. That, I'm not, I'm, I don't have to really go into that article anymore than that. I think it kind of speaks for itself. But this is the type of thing. There are just so many different fronts where Ripple is making all the right moves and all, the, all these awesome things are going on. So what I decided that uh, we should do is send this to Peter Schiff. Um, because Peter Schiff is always having his Bitcoin gold debate and I sent this to Peter Schiff. I said, here you go, Peter. It was never Bitcoin. It's about the one, Ripple and XRP. And I sent him that article. I don't think he replied, but he sees these things. No, don't worry about that. And I also decided it'd be a good time to send him this. And um, I, I, I realize, I mean, I, every time you post an article that's not recent, you ha immediately have some people that come in and say, oh, that's old news. I wasn't posting it because I didn't know that it was old news. I know it's old news, but Peter Schiff may not be aware of the fact of this fact. Hi, Peter Schiff. Meet Miguel Valles, former global head of precious metals at the CME Group, current head of XRP markets at Ripple. It was never Bitcoin. It's XRP. And that is so, so true. All right. Now, this was just so cool. I had to show it to you from XRP Vegas. He sent me this. And maybe it won't start back up. I, I didn't want to. Let me get some of this Theraflu here. This is so good. I think it's like a lemon flavor. What you're looking at here, and this this really does show you just how crazy this world we're entering is. This is a guy, some genius, 
who has set up a live stream on YouTube of a bird feeder. And this should give many of you out there just a hilarious, um, some hilarious ideas for what you could do. But this guy has set up a live stream that's looking at his bird feeder and it says feeding the birds with cryptocurrency. And so you can contribute nano, Litecoin, Bitcoin, and Dogcoin to help him buy the feed to feed these birds, if that's your thing. But I thought that was just such a killer idea. Okay, now let's get on to a few more serious things after this one. Michael B at XRP, Michael B. Many reasons that he's tweeting out this from Weiss. XRP is one of the most beloved cryptos in the world. Why do you hold XRP? And Michael B, um, who is a definite follow, he's all over Twitter. He's actually, I've talked about him before because he's actually a, a contractor and I grew up, my father was a home builder and so a lot of times he'll say things and he'll talk about some of his frustrations in, in building things and different things going on and I can totally identify because I grew up under that. I grew up sm uh, she sweeping sheetrock dust out of, out of houses all the time. I can still smell it. He says many, re he's talking about why he holds XRP, many reasons. Longing for the day when I can say, I told you so. Yes, Michael, that's going to feel good, isn't it? <laughs> I agree. Um, so anyway, now, Bull Run Wonka, I don't know what, I don't know what is in, uh, what he's been eating or drinking lately, but this guy or girl, I don't know if it's a guy or girl, is on fire. Um, he, I think, from what I've read, I think that, that Bull Run Wonka, who is a major contributor to the XRP community, I think that he sees, he or she sees kind of what I believe that we're seeing and are going to see more of, that people are, the, the, the more that people realize that XRP is the one, that the attacks are going to get a bit larger and larger and larger. Because remember, the worst nightmare of any Bitcoin, the Bitcoin people know that they're in an inferior technology. They know that they're at the top only because they were the first mover. The day that, that the XR, the, uh, what do they call it? The, the ripening or something like that. The day that XRP jumps over Bitcoin and all of a sudden everybody puts a magnifying glass over these and says, no, wait a minute, let's look at these for what they really are, for their usefulness and how fast they move and all the things that really matter and ultimately the utility, what will really matter. When that happens, you are going to see some evil stuff come out from these Bitcoin people. And I think you're already starting to see it. And I think Wonka smells that. And I believe that for that reason, he is starting to get really aggressive about, look, let's call everybody out on what's going on here. And so when I see the interesting things he's putting out, I'm going to show them to you. And here's one of them. He says, can they be trusted? Birds of a feather. And I don't know. I'm, this is the first time seeing of this, folks. I'm not accusing anybody of anything. But it's interesting enough to show and look at. Can they be trusted? Birds of a feather flock together. Um, and, he, and he's got this picture. This is the guy, mm, I'm drawing, he, uh, this guy runs one of the big exchanges, bit something, I'd forget. And this is Charlie Lee, the founder of Litecoin. That's Rand Nooner, who runs the CNBC crypto show. This is the CEO of Binance, C -E CZ Binance, as he's called on Twitter. And this is the founder of Tron, Justin Sun, who also worked for Ripple, or Ripple Asia, I believe. So, just an interesting, he's laying out some interesting things and he did it in several tweets here. Remember, remember, this is his other tweet. Let's see here. Come on. Remember when Binance and Bitmain considered a reorganization of Bitcoin after the Binance hack? China can controlled commie coin, choose wisely. Birds of a feather flock together, hold XRP, wonk a nose. And then he's got another picture of, of a similar cast of characters. And then, he tweeted this out. This is Bitmain, one of, I'm sorry, the old digital asset investor computer is is uh, trying to get caught up here. This is Bitmain, one of, the, one of the many communist China centralized Bitcoin mining operations. Coal powered plants pushing electricity and pollution. It is legal to rip off foreign investors in China. Do you think this government's hands is in place to store value? <laughs> it's kind of funny. <coughs> okay. Uh, let's get rid of these. We're going to move on here. A lot of interesting little things here today. Um, and then Crypto D said, I keep hearing we could head, head as low as 15 cents. Honestly, I don't care. I'll keep accumulating bit by bit. 
with what I've seen here with deep dives and by great selected few great YouTuber breakdowns and what I see for myself big boy pants are on just like just like Donkey Kong which is my two, two of my sayings but he's retweeting this that we covered from Mr. B about you know what holders are really here for and he's basically making point yeah we're, we're here for uh, the money but to make money but we're also here because any of you who have really been following if you've been following me and and three or four other youtubers over the last say three months and you started to piece some of this together we are here for something other than the money we're here because we really do believe that we're a part of something that is about to change the entire world as we know it I was talking to someone I don't remember who the other day and I was saying do you realize that we are talking about a company Ripple and a digital asset XRP that could be one of the two of the most important things in finance that the world has ever known and the people around those things the people that some of which are listening to us talk and watching us tweet are some of the most powerful people they will have they will end up being some of the most powerful people in the history of the world and that includes names like Vanderbilt and Rockefeller and JP Morgan that is what we're talking about here folks and that's the point that Mr. B's really making here. This is not just digital assets and oh, everybody can make some money. Look at the great returns. This is a world changing thing that's going on here. Most of the world just doesn't know it yet, but they will. Okay, um, Cryptopolis. Now this is awesome and this goes hand in hand with what I just said. Cryptopolis at Cryptopolis underscore X. My favorite Miguel Vias moment. This is the reason that I tweeted Miguel Vias to Peter Schiff this morning because I saw this tweet and watched this and everybody needs to go watch this. Remember, this guy was the head of global, I think, precious metals or something at the CME group. He was brought on to, to deal with uh, the liquidity of XRP. He's head of XRP markets. He's a brilliant guy. He's the guy that said hashtag zero doubt during the 2017 run up or right after it. Um, he, he's, it's a quote from him, I believe since I read the white paper, Consensus XRP, had the capability of changing the world. And he says the same thing that I say to people about talking to my wife. He says, I'm always talking about XRP, this and my wife thinks I'm crazy. Same thing here. I mean, my fr same thing with my friend, a lot of people. The same thing with a lot of people that are in this Twitter. What happens is at some point you're in this community and at some point this this thing flips in your head this a switch flips in your head and it's like you finally have come to an understanding of what you're really a part of and i believe that's what miguel Vias is talking about in this the guy left the cme group to go to a startup called ripple folks and now he's in a position to be one of the most important people in the changing of the entire world history this is being made right now okay um, now look at this this guy keeps popping up out of nowhere folks I'm sorry even if, if you think this guy's full of crap maybe he is I don't know but he keeps popping up everywhere and he keeps saying things that are pretty smart sounding a lot of them but just read this I'm not saying I agree with everything the guy says but I am saying it's interesting enough to read it pay attention to it and, and decide for yourself what if what's being said makes sense when you think about it, Tony makes a good point. Why has the IMF been meeting with Ripple? RTGS are overseen by central banks that report to the BIS. IMF provides loans and debt restructuring for countries in stress. Is crypto the IMF's tool for creating a level playing field? And this is his tweet. XRP pump will be the silent bailout. Everything is in place. OTC sales went to too big to fail banks and institutions don't ask when moon ask when bailout this is the first time that I've this Twitter handle right here is the first time that I've ever seen anybody hit it like that a silent bailout what if digital what if all what if all of these people that did these bailouts what if they all knew I, I mean I've always known that they knew they knew just how crazy this was I that, that this was I believe that behind closed doors when they did those bailouts I believe that probably the the main topic of conversation was will there be a revolution if we do this 
And I think that the, they they learned from that that just how arrogant they were able to be and get away with it. And and I, I believe that digital assets ultimately are going to be the biggest transfer of wealth that the country, the world has ever seen. And this does make sense to me because I've always thought that they, when, the, when 2008, the financial crisis happened, the powers that be realized, hey, this, this can't happen again. This is crazy. And I think they realized it. And I believe digital assets are and will be the solution to, to fix all of the world's problems that have been created by all this. Okay, moving along. Now look at this. Um, this guy's been on fire lately. Ian Northing at, at IANBINS. He copied it to me. You always say follow the money. Well, something is up. Mark Zuckerberg too. He's got this graphic that is so interesting. You got the CEO Tim Cook is selling Apple shares. Mark Zuckerberg is selling Facebook shares. Um, you got Jeff Bezos and he's selling Amazon shares. Let me see if there was another one. I may have missed it, but I think that's it. Maybe these are all uh, insider. Oh, it's insider selling. Center point. So basically, you got all these major executives that are selling their stocks right now. And then yesterday, we or I think yesterday or the day before, we talked about Warren Buffett and how he's sitting with all his cash on the sidelines. Pay attention to that this stuff, folks, because it matters. They know something's coming. And then Mr. B at, X, at XRP Mr. sent me this. Uh, let's give Alex Cobb some credit here. Um, and for those of you that don't follow him, that you can follow him here at Alex Cobb underscore. And he's he's one of the first guys. He's one of the guys that started all this XRP YouTube thing. He live streams every day, um, I believe at 1.30 Eastern time. Go give him a subscribe. Oh, man, you guys need to see who Ripple will be on three separate panels with. And guess what? It will be live streamed for us XRP holders to watch. So on September 12th and 13th, Alex Cobb would be the place to go watch that live stream. Now, he's tweeting out an article from, this is Alex Cobb's website, I think, that he created. It's called the XRPDaily.com. You should go visit that site because he, he does a good job. What he's showing you, he got this from Jana One Trick. And this is uh, a, uh, it says on September 12th and 13th, 2019, this event, OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, Policy Forum on Blockchain. Ripple will be speaking in three different sessions. But what he wanted to show you was, look who is going to be there. Liz Chen, Vice President of Global Tax and Chief Tax Ripple. And then you have panelists. Now you've got, this is the people at Ripple sitting side by side with people from the SEC. Valerie, however you say that last name, Senior Advisor for Digital Assets and Innovation. John Evans, Head of Blockchain Strategy for Va Vanguard. Bri Brianna Madigan, Head of Global Institutional Markets Ripple. Now, I want to stop right here and make another point because I just saw this Vanguard right here. Who has been, t who told you, I, I guess it was a year ago, the Vanguard CEO, I believe it was the Vanguard CEO came out and said that they would never offer anything any digital Bitcoin or, di or crypto, they were never going to do that. I, I don't remember exactly how I said it, but I can find you the article. And when I saw that article, I told you everyone will be in digital assets, not just some, but the most conserv the most conservative uh, financial firms will be in digital assets. And I named by name Vanguard and Charles Schwab. I said at that time they will be in digital assets. Well, now we've got John Evans, and they've got a blockchain strategy apparently so they must be coming in after all so thanks for confirming what i already knew um and i'm not, I'm not talking to alex i'm saying thanks thanks vanguard for confirming what i already knew um okay and then on the same pan this uh at this same event you got dylan ratha head of nomad lead lead economist migration and remittances world bank and then you got marjan delatine uh, global head of banking from ripple and then you can watch it live. He's got that there. So be sure and watch that Alex Cobb will be streaming. I'm sorry this video went so long, but I had a lot to say. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And tell your friends and family. you got to watch Alex Cobb's live stream on this so you can see this should be interesting. Thank you for listening.